Hello, this is Harry. In this video, let's watch the adventure film 127 Hours. A weekend in April 2003, a senior outdoor explorer Aaron was ready to challenge the limit of the sport again. He was already familiar with the route. He didn't expect this time would last for too long so he just grabbed some common tools and supplies and went out in a hurry. As always, Aaron didn't tell anyone about his plan. At night, he drove away from the noisy city into the quiet canyon. In the wee hours of the morning, Aaron rushed to the campsite and fell into sleep. On Saturday morning, Alan officially started his adventure. He rode his bike through the vast Blue John Canyon. Like a bird that escaped from its cage, he lived freely under the blue sky. After a long time, Aaron stopped on the hill and opened the DV shooting record he carried with him. According to the guidebook, it took four hours to drive through the canyon. This trip was to challenge the limit of time. After 45 minutes of riding, Alan locked the car to the trunk. He walked into the Grand Canyon he was familiar with. This was like his second home. Later, Aaron met two girls who came here to travel and got lost. Aaron's sense of humor won the favor of girls. He asked them to take a cooler route. Sure enough, the explorer didn't take the usual path. The steep terrain made the girls keep complaining. Suddenly, Alan loosened his hands and fell straight into the pond under the cliff. Listening to Alan's naughty laugh, the girls were relieved. After the three of them had fun, they parted ways at an intersection. During the time together, the two girls' affection for Alan doubled. They kindly invited him to the carnival party the following night. Because of this, Aaron continued his search for the pleasure of being a sports explorer. For a senior like Aaron, slot canyons were essential playgrounds for his journey. He shuttled through the canyon freely. When passing a slot canyon, Aaron supported the wall with his feet and hooked a boulder with his right hand to climb to the bottom. Unexpectedly, the boulder suddenly loosened, Aaron lost his grip and fell. The boulder that fell with Aaron trapped his right hand. The accident made Alan regret it for a long time. Waiting for him to react before discovering that his hand was trapped, it had been tightly twisted between the boulder and the cliff. Aaron resisted the pain to calm himself down. He tried to move the boulder with his left hand, but it didn't move. He tried his best for a while and gave up the useless idea. After a sip of water, Aaron suddenly remembered the two girls. He yelled the girls' names, hoping that they would hear and come to rescue him. Yet there was no living creature to be seen in the canyon. Now helpless, he could only save himself. Aaron calmed down and started to think. He took the mountain's climbing supplies from his backpack and placed them in front of him. A pocket knife meeting his eyes let Aaron see a glimmer of hope. He wanted to use a knife to chip off the boulder but his hand was sore and it didn't work. He accidentally dropped the knife on the ground. Aaron got hung in midair and was restricted from moving, so he clamped a branch with his toes and took a lot of time to get back the knife. However, he did not succeed until midnight. It was Sunday in a blink of an eye. Aaron, hungry and cold in the dark slot canyon, gave up chipping. Instead, he used rock climbing equipped to hook the rocky ground above to let himself stabilize on the cliff. In the morning, the sun slowly shone into the canyon, Aaron stretched out a foot and hand to feel the temperature. He recalled the warmth when his father took him to when he was a child. At 3 p.m., Aaron turned on the DV and took a video. He had prepared for the worst if he couldn't survive. He hoped the person who picked up the DV could give this video to his parents. Aaron had been trapped for 24 hours. The blood in his arm couldn't circulate, and it might have become necrotic. He lacked food and had only less than 400 milliliters of water. He felt that he couldn't last long. As he was talking, some dust fell on him. Aaron thought someone was passing by and hurriedly called for help. However, there was still no response. Alan replayed the video from the moment he called for help and kept encouraging himself to never give up. At night, the temperature began to drop. Aaron used the robes to wrap his hands, feet, and bare skin to keep warm. Then he bit the food, imagining the refreshing beer at the party. He was so thirsty that he couldn't wait to take a whole bottle of beer. However, his water source was not much, and he couldn't last long unless he drank it drop by drop. And Aaron knew very well that he didn't tell anyone where he was going before going out. So waiting for rescue could only be a foolish dream. Early the next morning, Aaron made another plan. He circled the boulder with a climbing rope then tied the rope tightly with both hands and mouth. Then he hooked the rope with the safety buckle to the previous rope, attempting to pull the boulder with its weight and drag force. However, he tried his best to pull all morning, but the boulder remained still. The failure made Aaron fall into despair again. It was noon when the sun was scorching. Aaron with a dry mouth wanted to drink a cold soda, even just a gulp. Now he only had 150 milliliters of water left, he could only hold on till the following night. Aaron had to collect urine to deal with the next bad situation. Now he was helpless, and hopeless to save himself. It wouldn't take long to die here. A crow flew in the sky every day. Aaron laughed at himself, maybe the crows could eat him tomorrow. In order to maintain his body temperature, Aaron kept stretching his leg. He suddenly thought of a problem. Even if he could move the boulder a little, his hands would only get twisted more tightly. At present, the only way to save himself was to amputate. Aaron amputated his hand using the existing tool but the knife was too blunt. Aaron cut hard for a long time but only a few bloodstains appeared. He was frustrated and said to DV, don't buy the cheap, made-in-China multi-tool. As time passed, Aaron's supplies became less. 
his spirit was gradually languishing. Dizzy, remembered the happy time with his family as a child. He thought of the love with his friends. He remembered the sweet moments when sharing the bed with his ex-girlfriend. Suddenly, the clouds were covered with thunder. It rained heavily in the sky. Aaron was awakened, enjoying this gift of heaven. However, the heavy rain soon rapidly rushing into the cracks in the canyon. In a moment, Aaron disappeared in the flood. Aaron desperately pushed the boulder. Unexpectedly, the boulder was pushed away by Aaron under the buoyancy of the water. Aaron pulled out his right hand, swam up to the surface, and ran out of the canyon. He found his car and galloped home. His ex-girlfriend opened the door for him. But all of this was just an illusion. Now he was still trapped in a desperate situation, hungry and cold. His life might end at any time. On Tuesday morning, Aaron drank the last drop of water. The knife was inserted into his right arm. The severe pain made him have to take a breath. He felt the bone in his arm with the tip of the knife. He was forced to amputate his hand. On Wednesday, Aaron could only survive on stored urine. Gradually, Aaron's spirit began to disintegrate. He saw his ex-girlfriend break up with him. His family and friends sat together staring at him. He saw he was playing the piano with his sister. He had no chance to attend his sister's wedding. He couldn't realize his sisters wished to play together at the wedding. Aaron left his last words to the DV with only one frame left. He carved his birthday and name on the cliff. He was ready for death. Under the sun and wind, illuminating another world for Aaron, he seemed to see the laughter of himself and his son in the future. He saw his family, he saw the future, he saw hope. Tears flickered in Aaron's eyes, and his fighting spirit to live rekindled. He mustered his strength and cut his right arm with the help of the boulder. He endured the severe pain and cut the hand with a small knife. Despite the painful grin, he still encouraged himself not to faint. Finally, Aaron pulled hard with the help of his body and successfully amputated his hand. Stunned for a moment, Aaron quickly bandaged the wound and quickly put away his equipment. He wanted to leave this place where he had been trapped for 127 hours. Before leaving, Aaron photographed his amputated arm with the camera. He walked along to the end of the canyon and came to the edge of a cliff. The warm sunshine flooded all over his body, at this moment he was free. However, he had to face a new problem. How should he get from the rock wall to the ground? At this moment, Aaron turned around and found the lock left by another climber. He slowly dropped to the ground with the help of the climbing rope. Luckily, there was a puddle under the rock wall. Aaron plunged into the water, enjoying the gift that nature gave him. After that, Aaron filled his water bottle and walked into the empty Grand Canyon. He didn't know how long it had been, he was exhausted. He saw a family trekking for three days in a trance. He shouted hoarsely to the travelers for help. Upon seeing this, the family ran forward and provided Aaron with fresh water and contacted a nearby rescue helicopter. Aaron, who nearly stepped into the death gate, was finally saved. The doctor said that if he was rescued one hour late, Aaron would die from blood loss. After recovery, Aaron still loved outdoor adventure. But every time he left, he wrote a note for his family. Three years after the accident, Aaron got married. In February 2010, his son was born. The real protagonist of the movie is also called Aaron Ralston. He loves mountain climbing, for his whole life. Aaron also wrote on his website. You'll never find your limits until you've gone too far. Well, this video ends here. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, see you next time.